Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, I am going to talk about how to debug an issue in a Pega application. In a developer's day-to-day -day life, definitely we will be facing lot of issues during the development and it is our responsibility to debug and fix those issues. Not only on the development but also on the production you may get some issues. Okay, now I am just going to list down some of the common categories under which we get the issues. The first thing is our server failing to start. There can be many reasons for this and one such important culprit can be the resource allocation. Maybe the memory issue, the heap size. If it is not adequate, then definitely the issues can happen. Pega do provide some documentation, the minimum requirement for a server to run. Make sure you follow the standards. Let's say even after following the standards, if you get some issues, you should start debugging on the memory leak side. In your application, you may have an activity where you will be looping like 1000, 2000, 5000 records and then do a single transaction. If that is the case, then that is the culprit that is doing the memory leak. If you are not doing some enough page remove, that can also contribute to the memory leak. Make sure your clipboard is on the right size and clean up your clipboard at the right moment. So memory leak is one of the place where you can debug if your server is keep shutting down or if it is keep getting restarted. So the startup logs can really give you the idea of why your server is not starting up. The next is, especially with the personal edition, I have experienced a lot of times that my server never starts because of some issues with the Kafka directories. I have also seen this in my projects. In the lower environment, it is okay to delete the Kafka data directory. If you just delete the Kafka data directory, it is just simple restart. Just do a restart, then it is going to work but in production you cannot do that so it's also necessary to look into the issue like what type of issues you get and then you have to fix those issues mostly it can be like you may need to increase your space you have to increase your gps because the streams it keeps on growing in size and pega did a very good thing like in the later versions they are offloading there is not going to be any kind of embedded kafka data it's going to be on a separate server so at least your pega servers will not go down if you do the node classified as a stream and web together your web server is not going to go down also i would recommend you to do the right node classification so you have streams separately and web separately and the other issues can be like for example the dependencies it can have some issues some versioning issues maybe you have some kind of database drivers that is causing some issues so that can also be the case so we can talk with the ops people and get the right versions or have it rightly patched so that you don't have some issues and sometimes the servers it can fail to join the cluster the hassle cluster strangely it has happened with us and you have to clean up some of the statistics table, some of the node status table and then do a clean restart. Just do a trial and error then your cluster will get okay. So this can be different issues why your server is failing to start. Let's say you fix the, all the issues, your server is all good. Sometimes we get an issue like when we hit the URL, there is no response. Although the server status is good, we may not get any response. The issue can be like, the access group that is specified in the browser requester will have an invalid application. Maybe the application is deleted or something. So the access group can cause some issues with the login. Be it the URL is not loading, that can be an issue. Or let's say your access group is pointing to an application that does not exist, then only you will not have the access. You will have the login page, but you cannot get into the application. Such issues, you have to fix it by updating the access group. If the browser requester is not impacted, you can just check with your fellow developers who are pointing to a different application because if they point to the same application, they are also going to get the same issues. Also, it is always advisable that you have the administrator operator pointing to the Pega platform application and store those passwords into some kind of wall so that if needed, you can log in and then you can update the access groups. Now, let's say no one can log in and update the access group. Then what you can do is, you can also go to a different environment, update the instance to the right application and then you can take a zip out of it and then import it. You may think how to import it, right? We have the PDM Pega deployment manager or other way which uses the API call to do the import. In that case, we don't need to have a browser login. So you can update the access group from the backend. 
so that is one kind of solution so all these authentications you can check from the log files going forward whatever issues we saw before and whatever issues we are going to see afterwards the first thing which you can look into is the log files because the log files is going to give you all the details what really happened okay now let's say we fixed all the issues we get into the application and then we face some issues with the case processing case processing issues is the most common issues which you will get most of the time when you do some development of course we tend to do some small mistakes that can break the case processing we can have runtime error we can have some null pointer exceptions rule not found error there can be different errors that can happen with the case processing tracer can really help you with that if you find some issues with the dev environment what you can do is just start the tracer repeat the same steps identify the rules behind the issues and there you can easily fix it if it happens in production you cannot just manually create some cases in production you can sit with the end users who is having the issues maybe you can do some screen sharing you can do some remote tracer or you can look into the clipboard of the end user to see some issues like what is really happening so this can really help you with the, the tracer remote tracing and the clipboard and then in the clipboard you can also check the case status i didn't mean by what status i meant like when it was last updated who updated it and if you go inside you will also find the stage history the px flow that can really point you where the case stays definitely if there is some issues at any specific flow shape the case is going to stay at that shape that can really help you to narrow down at which location the issue happens also it is good to check the case history if you write some kind of case history you can also identify like what really happened at the last and also keep a note on the flow errors because sometimes if there is some issues with the flow it always goes to the exception work basket or flow problem error can occur so you can also look into those instances and see if your case stays into the error work basket so with case processing get your hands on the clipboard and the tracer next type of error can be the integration error let's say you have some connector and you are connecting to some external system you are connecting for two months and suddenly you are getting some error it can be like your certificate expired you may get ssl handshake exception into the pega logs in such cases you can just first look into your certificate maybe you can use the key tool to check the certificate content and check the expiry date it could be that it's already expired in such cases what you can do you can create a new certificate or get a right certificate install it into your key store that should fix the issues and make sure you restart the server once you install the certificate so that your new certificates takes into effect again this ssl handshake exceptions can be easily found on the log files maybe you can also talk with the service provider because other teams also might have impacted with the same issues right so in such cases you can just talk with them and see if only our application is impacted let's say they inform that all other applications are connecting good and only the issues are with our application so definitely it can be something to do with our end so you can look for the source code like the connector activity maybe the data page if there is some kind of changes happened recently some of our fellow developers did some issues then we can look into the check in commands or we can just easily identify what the changes were done and we can also fix it and if it is some kind of get service in the lower environment you can always replicate the scenario and do the testing even in the production if it is a get service maybe it may be allowed in your organization to hit the service to check the response so you can also do some tracing in the production if it is a get service don't try to do it for some post service maybe i have to take my word back don't try to do some kind of api testing in production with some little risk so just keep it in mind when you do some testing in production also in production i would say enable the loggers pega have some nice loggers for different integrations for connect res connect soap service res service soap they have nice loggers all you have to do is just change the logging level to debug mode and then when the next time the issue happens you will get lot of log entries some valuable information from that you can also identify what steps have happened and where the issues happened and having the right loggers can really help you with the debugging and the fifth one is on the background processing issues sometimes we have some kind of queue processes we have standard agents and they throw some error the first place where you can look into is go to the admin studio and go to the queue management there you will have some broken queue entries just look into the broken queue entries and don't just blindly requeue it first look into the issues 
look into the XML there you will have some error description just go through the error description so that the same issue will not happen in the future right first try to fix the issues and now you know some issues if you do some kind of workaround or fix you can very well requeue to reprocess those broken queue items and then you may also have some issues with listeners not starting up at least in the lower versions i have seen the listeners are not starting up frequently most of the time we have to do some kind of server restart that can really help with or you can also stop start the listener that can also help but there are different types of solutions available for the listener restart maybe you can also check in some pdn the community support articles there you can get more details on this listener issue okay one final topic is on the performance issues sometimes your applications can perform really bad you can debug as usual you can start with log files maybe the alert logs can be more informative you can check if there is lot of alerts are getting generated during that time because pega use lot of out of the box alerts different alerts and different categories of alerts are there so that can really provide some information so first thing look into your alerts and then there are some kind of performance tools you have you have the performance profiler you have the db profiler you have the pal report so just use those tools to identify which rule is taking more time or where the performance is causing the issues so that can really help you get started so if you look at performance issues there can be many reasons that can contribute to your performance issues be it the integrations like you have some connectors and they take more time maybe the external system they don't respond fast that can also cause some issues your database may have lot of instances so you may need to partition your tables or you may need to move the instances to separate tables you may need to create some indexes so database related issues can be there browser interaction issues can be there if you have a cluttered ui you put lot of layouts lot of sections into your web page then loading the web page can take lot of time so performance there are lot of issues i would say go to the alerts and check what type of performance issues you have and try to fix it one by one at least that can definitely improve and make sure you always follow the guardrails and have a good coding standard when you do the development i hope i explained it enough some of the common issues and how you can debug it in pega i will see you in the next video